Hi, my name is Kwekwe. I'm a pharmacist. In today's video, I want to highlight six categories of people that should be careful or should take extra precaution if they decide to take Ozempic or decide to take any of the medications in that class. So we're talking about Wegovi, we're talking about Monjaro and the likes. The first group of people, and this is the big elephant in the room, let's get it out, which is people with their family or personal history of certain types of thyroid cancer. And we're talking about a specific type of thyroid cancer called thyroid C-cell tumors. Now, what happened is that during clinical trials, they noticed that when rodents were given semaglutide, which is the active ingredient in Ozempic, there was an increase in the incidence of these thyroid tumors. Though it has not necessarily been translated to humans out of the abundance of caution, there is a black box warning for people with either a personal history or a family history of those types of cancers to, for the most part, stay away from Ozempic. Now, interestingly, I do get a lot of questions where people asking me, hey, I do take Synthroid, I do take Levothyroxine, does it mean I cannot take Ozempic? No, that is not necessarily what, the, what this warning is referring to. So if you have an overactive thyroid or underactive thyroid, it does doesn't necessarily exclude you from taking Ozempic. We're talking about people cancer, not necessarily the fact that your thyroid gland is not functioning well to produce the hormones that you need, or if your thyroid gland is producing too much hormones. That is not what the reference is. The reference is specifically to cancer and a specific type of cancer for that matter. The second group of people to be worried or to be cautious about Ozempic is people with a history of pancreatitis. Now, uh, pancreatitis is an inflammation of the pancreas and semaglutide or Ozempic has been shown to slightly increase or elevate the risk of developing pancreatitis. So if you have a history of pancreatitis, make sure you are discussing it in detail with your doctor. Also, if you start taking Ozempic and you experience any kind of severe abdominal pain, maybe come with or without vomiting, which tends to radiate from the, uh, the front to the back, you need to you know, not brush that under the carpet. You need to discuss that with the doctor for him to take a look. It may or may not be that, but if it is really determined that it is pancreatitis, most times or almost all the time, the medication will be discontinued and an alternative sought for you. Number three is people with a history of diabetic retinopathy. Diabetic retinopathy is characterized by blurred vision where there's a lot of extra blood vessels forming on the retina and semaglutide, interestingly, can make that situation worse. Problem is that rapidly improving blood sugar levels, unfortunately, can temporarily aggravate diabetic retinopathy. So if you have a history of diabetic retinopathy um, and you start taking Ozempic and you notice any blood vision, any increase in blood vision, you need to tell your doctor about it. There are not enough studies right now to determine the long-term effects of semaglutide on diabetic retinopathy, uh, but for the short term, it has been shown to worsen it. So if you have a history of that, chances are that your doctor may want to seek other options for you. So that's something that you need to discuss with your doctor. The next group of people that should be careful is people with a history of kidney disease. Now, as you may already be aware, some of the key side effects of Ozempic are the nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea that comes with it. And unfortunately, this can further lead to dehydration. And anytime you are dehydrated, you put your kidney at a greater risk of of further injury. So if you have a history of kidney disease, that is something that you really need to pay attention to. If you happen to be in the category of people that experience some of these side effects, you want to make a conscious effort to keep well hydrated to reduce that risk of further kidney damage. Similarly, people with a history of gallbladder problems should also be careful. Ozempic and medications in that class have been known to cause gallbladder problems in people. So if you experience any kind of upper abdominal pain, if it's accompanied by yellowing of the skin, yellowing of the eyes, or your stools become discolored, those are all not good signs. And those are signs that you should report to your doctor immediately. The next group of people that should be careful when they take Ozempic or if they even do take it is uh, pregnant people or people who are planning on becoming pregnant. Now, there are currently not enough detailed studies on the effect of semaglutide on unborn human fetuses. However, animal studies show an increase in the risk for potential harm for the unborn fetus. So if you are planning on becoming pregnant, the manufacturer recommends a two-month washout period. In other words, you need to stop Ozempic about two months before you get pregnant. Of course, if there are situations where your doctor deems that, as a matter of fact, you need Ozempic even while you're pregnant, he will have to make that judgment call. But generally speaking, you need to stop Ozempic about two months prior to getting pregnant. So six groups of people that should be careful with Ozempic. On your screen now is a video that I did detailing the pros and cons of taking Ozempic. That is if you are now trying to decide whether it is good for you. Hope you enjoyed that one too. Stay blessed and catch you in the next video.